Hey up everyone, right, so we need to talk about Brexit again because things are getting really, really bad in this country right now. We're seeing an absolute collapse of the British economy here. And Boris Johnson's trying to say that the problems that we're experiencing are to do with COVID, right? But this is, see, the thing is, like, other countries have, are also suffering from COVID and not one of them are having to deal with what we're having to deal with here. So we've got to a situation in this country where there's no food, right? We're the fifth richest nation on earth and you go to the shops and the shelves are all empty. There's nothing there, right? I just did my my shopping and like I do it online through an app and it gets delivered to my door, right? So I went to go do my shopping, right? And every, there's just nothing, there's nothing available. I went to go get some meat. There's no meat available anywhere here, right? You basically had a warning from the, the pig and poultry um, producers saying essentially there's two weeks worth of meat left and then everything's going to close and there's going to be no meat in the country at all right and it's already happening like I said when I went to do my shopping there's no meat available right I managed to get some chicken and that was it there was no pork there was no beef there was nothing there right this is this this is a fucking crisis do you know what I mean right it's like living in some kind of like post-apocalyptic fucking novel or something where there's no food right so so this is causing massive fucking problems in the country so like at the moment right the thing that's the, the, that's causing the problem with the meat is that um the gas prices have gone through the roof right and they've gone through the roof because of su the supply chains collapsed right because We've got no drivers in the country, right? There's no, there's no heavy goods vehicle drivers. The the British Haulage Association said that we're missing about a hundred thousand drivers, right? Because most of these drivers were were Europeans, right? We had massive immigration of um, of drivers, and also because our supply chains are, are European based. Do you know what I mean, like? Um, we're not like a self-sufficient country or anything like that, right? Do you know what I mean? We've, we're massive trade with Europe. And so things would get shipped in from Europe and the drivers would then distribute it within Britain, right? But these drivers are not coming in because of Brexit, because they're not allowed to work in this country anymore. Um, so now these drivers are not there. So therefore, there's no way of getting things moved around the country anymore. This is having a massive, massive knock-on effect around. So, <clears throat> 100,000 drivers down, that's what we are, right? But, this, this, this lack of, of workers from the EU is having all kinds of effects on us, especially with, us, with our food supply. So... Like I say, at the moment we've got a problem. So like the gas prices have gone through. It's like gas price has gone up by about 40% or something, right? Now the thing is that why this is a problem for, for, for food is that essentially like pigs and, and poultry, they are killed by using CO2, right? So basically they like poison them with carbon dioxide, right? But carbon dioxide is 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 created directly from gas, right? And because gas prices have gone through the roof, they can't afford to get the CO2, right? So they can't afford to kill the animals, right? So now <clears throat> these pigs and these and, and chickens and poultry and stuff, right, are not being killed. So they're having to stay on the farms, right? Which is increasing the costs to farmers because they're having to feed these animals and stuff when they should be killing them and selling them, now they're having to keep them for longer, and they're having to pay 
for the food and for the welfare and for the upkeep of these animals. And this is having massive, massive costs that, that, that the farmers are having to, to having to deal with, right? So, so, they're not, so they're not killing these animals. So these animals are not coming to market. So like, like I say, we've got two weeks worth of meat left in the country, two weeks. And then after that, we're gonna have no meat whatsoever, right? And the thing is that like, They're saying that even if these problems were like, if they tried to sol solve them, this is still going to go on for months and months, right? They're saying that like Christmas is cancelled. That's what we keep hearing from them is Christmas is cancelled. There's no way that we're going to be able to supply the country for the food that it wants. Because like Christmas is a, is a really big market for like food. Do you know what I mean? Like you have loads of... parties and Christmas dinners and things like that where people buy a lot of food over the Christmas period and the, the suppliers are saying that we're not going to get that it's not that's not going to happen right so this is going to have a massive effect for us over Christmas and stuff <clears throat> so so this is a fucking major problem we've got in this country where we've got no food I mean I just thought it's it's unbelievable the fifth richest nation on earth can't supply its own people with food. This is the situation that we're in with Brexit. It's just having massive, massive knock-on effects with us here. And the thing is that, like, through the whole COVID-19, a lot of this has been kind of hidden, do you know what I mean? Because the COVID-19 thing's having an effect. And all the Brexit stuff's just sort of all being under the under the radar. But now it's all coming to the front. Now it's... now. After months of this, it's now starting to be massively affecting our economy, massively affecting our supply chains and stuff like that. And we're just not be being able to supply people with the things that they need. And so that's the meat industry, which is being massively, massively affected here. It's also, it's also massively affected by the fact that we can't export anything now, right? Because we've got no hauliers, all the stuff that we usually... Because, like, Britain's economy, right, is the largest part of our economy is a service sector, which is, like, banking and insurance and stuff and things that happen in, like, the city of London, right, yeah. Our second largest export is weapons, right? We're a massive weapons exporter, right? But our third largest export is food. We're a massive food producer in this country, right? And we sell a ridiculous amount of food, but we mainly sell it to the European Union. That's where that's our largest market for food, right? But we can't sell it to them because we can't get it to Europe because we've got nobody to drive these things. So this is having a massive <clears throat> negative effect on our food industry because we can't export anything anymore. And so we're not getting income by exporting food that we used to do before. The thing is that the most of our food industry was was like staffed and worked by immigration from Europe, right? So we had <clears throat> hundreds of thousands of Europeans who would come into Britain and work within the food industry. So they work like within the like um, meat industry and stuff. But the, the, the largest part was fruit and vegetables, right? <coughs> so we're a massive exporter. <clears throat> of fruit and vegetables we've got massive fields that are just full of like fucking fruit we've got orchards and stuff like that with like apples and pears and things like that that we sell abroad right but these these fruit and vegetables there's nobody to pick them anymore right so we'd get hundreds of thousands of people coming in from europe they'd stay in the country and they'd work in the fields and they'd be picking all the fruit all the strawberries and and stuff like that and and the fruit and veg industry would employ hundreds of thousands of people from Europe. Well, these people are not coming over here anymore because they're not allowed to, because they're not allowed to work here anymore, because they're classed as like foreign people, foreign workers, and they're not allowed in. So we've got hundreds of thousands of people who used to be working in the fields who are not working in the fields now. Now, the thing about that, that kind of work is it's fucking massively labour intensive, right? It's massive back breaking. They're working 12-hour shifts in the fucking fields. It's massively 
physical kind of work, right? This is not the work that indigenous people in Britain are willing to do. Do you know what I mean? We've got quite an advanced working class in this country and we expect certain standards at work and stuff. And most people are not willing to go work in the fields, right? It's also, it doesn't pay a great deal of money working in the fields either, right? So... So, Eastern Europe is where we mainly got our workers from, right? But they're not coming in. So now, we've got fruit and veg that is literally rotting in the fields, right? We had this farmer who, like, kind of shot to prominence because he was interviewed on the BBC and he basically went into it all because like I say most of this stuff it's not really being it hasn't really been talked about you know what I mean because it's all been COVID-19 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 and people have just been kind of ignoring what the hell's been going on with the whole Brexit shit yeah you know there's this farmer got interviewed and said basically he's just had to throw away millions of pounds worth of fruit and veg because it's just rotting in the fields and there's nobody to pick it Loads and loads of companies going bust. Loads of people unemployed because of this, right? So this is this is a major fucking problem we've got here. We've got problem with the meat industry. Not being able to supply us with the things that we need and that we want. And we've got massive problems with our fruit and veg as well. So basically, the entire food supply chain has just completely collapsed in this country completely and utterly collapsed you've got companies going bust left right and center we're not able to export anything we're not even able to provide for our for ourselves because we can't distribute any of this within the country it's an absolute absolute disaster is this the other thing well the other thing there's lots of things but another thing that's really massively impacting this is that since we left the EU, we've had to set up like customs port uh, checks at ports and stuff. And the thing is that like these are not being staffed properly, right? So, so like again, the people who are working there are saying that we're about a hundred thousand people. No, that should be being employed at the border to do all these custom checks. Everything that's coming into the country has to be checked, yeah? Everything that's going out of the country has to be checked. The, this is a new, this is new. This When we were in the EU, none of this existed, right? We didn't have to do any of this. This is a whole new thing that's been set up at, at the border, but we're not staffing it. So, so what's happening is we've got massive delays that are happening. And things that are getting to the border are being held up. So we've, we've built this massive fucking, this massive car park in Kent where all the lorries are basically just sat there doing nothing, waiting to go through custom checks that have got massive delay and a backlog behind them. So what's happening is that food and stuff that's, that, that's coming into the country is getting held up at the border and it's having to sit in these fucking car parks and then it's rotting, right? And then it's so then it's no use. So then that's having another massive impact because then they can't sell it. <clears throat> so that's having another knock-on effect on both our imports and our exports. That the stuff is just it's just rotting in, in, in there. It's destroying it, right? This is not a way to fucking run a, a, a national economy. Do you know what I mean? This is absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So overall, right? Uh, so, so basically, because of COVID and because of Brexit, our economy just crashed. Do you know what I mean? Right? It just it just completely collapsed. So, but but we're starting to get a bit of growth that's now happening within the economy as people are going back to work and the COVID nineteen restrictions are all ending and 
people are coming off furlough and going back into work and stuff. So, so unemployment is actually falling because more people are going back into work, but it's not it's not rising at the level that you would expect it to because people pe because there's also been an awareness. I think this has happened globally. It's not just happened in Britain of workers not prepared to go back and work for the same wages that they were working for before. Right? People are wanting to get paid more than what they were getting paid before, so they're not going into jobs. So so the unemployment level while whilst whilst unemployment's getting better it's not getting better at the rate that you would expect it to right so essentially what's happened is the british economy is growing by 0 0.1 percent right that's practically nothing right but what's also weird is we've got inflation that's like three three and a bit three three and a bit percent so we've got inflation like price prices are going up by three percent right but the economy is not growing by 3%. It's growing by 0.1%, which is shows there's a little bit of disconnect that's going on within the economy here, right? Between what you would expect to happen, which you would expect growth and inflation to be roughly about the same. Do you know what I mean? Because inflation is linked to growth. So you'd expect these two things to be more or less the same, but they're not. There's a massive disparity between these two here. So this is a massive... So while it looks like there's growth of 0.1%, this is not what you would be expecting because we're starting from such a low level that you would expect it to rebound and come come back. Do you know what I mean? You'd expect the economy to have a kickstart when everybody starts going back, but that's not happening. That's not happening. So our economy is actually pretty fucking depressed here. Right, it's, pro it's properly depressed. So, as we've mentioned before in a lot of our videos, one of the main fucking problems we've got is Northern Ireland, right? So the problem in Northern Ireland is pretty, de pretty desperate, right? So kind of what happened is... When Britain left the EU, one of the major problems was what the hell's going to happen in Northern Ireland? Because for 30 years, there was a civil war going on in Northern Ireland, right? There's basically two communities that exist in Northern Ireland. There's the nationalist community, and then there's the unionist community. So the unionists won Northern Ireland to... Because Northern Ireland is classed as part of the United Kingdom, right, yeah? So it's the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland, right? So the unionist community are like British and they want Northern Ireland to remain part of the United Kingdom, right, yeah? The nationalist community want Northern Ireland to join Southern Ireland and reunify the whole of Ireland, right? And there was a civil war about this, right? People were getting killed and stuff, bombs going off and shit, right? And basically this civil war came to an end with what was called the Good Friday Agreement. And basically what this did was, because, because both Britain and, and Southern Ireland were both part of the EU, that meant that we didn't have to have a border between the two. So essentially there was no border between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. So the nationalist community could feel that they were part of a united Ireland because they could cross over the border as if it didn't exist because it didn't exist because there wasn't a border and the two countries were linked together in such a way that the nationalist community could feel that they were part of a southern Ireland, right? So that dealt with their problems. But Northern Ireland was still part of the United Kingdom, so the unionist community... What they wanted was being satisfied as well. So both communities were quite happy with what was going on, right? And that brought the civil war to an end and there was peace in Ireland and everything was fine, right? But then when Britain leaves the EU, that means there's got to be a border somewhere between these two, right? So the thing was, we cannot put a border back up in Northern Ireland, right? We can't have a border between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland because that is going to inflame the nationalist community. And the nationalist community are not going to feel that they're part of this United Ireland thing. And that's going to inflame them, right? And basically, it was the nationalist community, the IRA and stuff, who were, like, fighting this civil war, right? Now, the thing is that, like, the IRA and stuff, right? So the IRA disbanded, but it didn't go away, right? 
There are other offshoots of other little IRAs and stuff. And and since and since Brexit, they're now bombing again, right? And this and this civil war is starting back up again here. Because what they agreed what, what they agreed was we're not gonna put a border in in Ireland. So there's gonna be no border between the two. And what's gonna happen is Northern Ireland is going to follow the EU. So as the EU standards and stuff change, Northern Ireland will follow them so that there's parity between the two, right? So that these two don't change from one another. So therefore, you don't need to have a border, right? But there has to be a border between Britain and the EU. So where is this border going to go, right? So what they agreed was to put the border down the Irish Sea, right? But what that means is that Northern Ireland is then cut off from the rest of Britain, right? So, so to export from Britain to Northern Ireland, it has to cross this border, right? Like I say, these borders are not being manned properly. So things are not crossing over these borders. They're being delayed and stopped. And what this meant was food, right? So Northern Ireland, most of its food comes from Britain, right? Yeah. So the food that was coming over from Britain got held up at the border, right? And then started rotting and didn't get through. So there was a massive food crisis. Like the food crisis that we're having in Britain, right? This has been going on for ages in Northern Ireland. As soon as they put the border up in the, in, down the Irish Sea and they didn't staff it, and we ended up with this massive backlog, then that cut off the food supply to Northern Ireland, right? So Northern Ireland had no food, right? So this inflamed the, the unionist community, right? Because... To them, Northern Ireland is now not part of the United Kingdom. It's separate and there's a border between Britain and Northern Ireland. And that's not acceptable to the unionist community. So then there's riots and stuff going on in Northern Ireland. And the unionist community are up in flames about this whole fucking border. Everywhere there's like graffiti about no border in the Irish Sea and stuff. So we've got this massive fucking problem in Northern Ireland, right? So then what the British decided to do is that this agreement about, not, about what was going to happen in Northern Ireland and putting the border in the Irish Sea and all this sort of stuff, this is what's called the Northern Ireland Protocol, right? This is a set of agreements that the EU and Britain agreed as to how this was going to work in Ireland, right? But as part of this agreement, right, there's a clause in it that says that either side, either the EU or Britain, can suspend the Northern Ireland Protocols. If there's a problem, they can suspend it so that, so that there's no border there, right? Now, this is supposed to be a temporary measure that's supposed to be done for if there's some kind of problem, right? But what's happened is Britain has started employing this, this clause to suspend the border in the Irish Sea so that it can ship its food into Northern Ireland, right? It's supposed to be a temporary measure. So it's been going on for six months now. Every month, Britain suspends it and suspends it and suspends it. And the, and the EU are not happy with this because this is not supposed to be a permanent set of affairs. And essentially, you, you basically, there's no border between Britain and the EU, right? Because Britain has suspended it. And the EU's not happy because what that means is that things can get into the EU market that the EU wouldn't generally let it in because it would stop it at the border, right? Yeah. So it's diluting the 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 market, the EU market, and the EU's not happy with this. And this is causing massive, massive conflicts between the two, right? So basically. The EU retaliated against this and started banning like pre-cooked food and stuff from Britain so that this couldn't so that they couldn't get into the EU and this is causing a massive massive conflict. And the thing is that this is they don't there in, don't seem to be any fucking solution to this problem, right? Britain keeps suspending the agreement, but that's not helping things in any way. And um and that's where we are in Northern Ireland. We've still got this massive conflict that's going on. There's no solution to this problem of getting food into Northern Ireland. And basically what's happening is Northern Ireland's now started getting its food from Southern Ireland because it can, it can get it 
directly from there. So again, this is having a massive knock-on effect to our exports because we usually export a hell of a lot of food into Northern Ireland, but that food's not getting in, and, I, and Northern Ireland's now buying its food from Southern Ireland. But it had to do something because there was no food, right? So, so it started buying it from Southern Ireland. So we've got this massive problem in Northern Ireland. And this has this has brought the Americans into this, right? So basically, Joe Biden, he's got Irish ancestry. He considers himself Irish, right? He's always going on about his Irish ancestry and stuff. Um, and he sent uh, Pelosi, who's like the speaker in America, he sent her over to Britain, basically to warn Britain that you you can't fuck about with Northern Ireland, do you know what I mean? You need to sort this problem out because this is causing massive conflict and stuff. And it's something that Joe Biden feels quite strongly about, right? I mean, the fact that he sent the speaker over here to talk to Britain, to tell them, look, you need to fucking sort this shit out because like, this is not, this is not acceptable what you're doing here. You can't just keep suspending the agreement, this agreement was signed off by both the EU and Britain. You can't just unilaterally decide to shut this down, do you know what I mean? So basically, that's that's kind of like um, where we are in Northern Ireland. This is a massive fucking constitutional crisis here, do you know what I mean? Um, we've now got the unionist community up in arms. There's riots up and down the country, right? Fucking, the whole place is on fire. There's fucking massive discontent within Northern Ireland. And, you know, it looks like... It looks like we might end up with another civil war there. Do you know what I mean? But rather than it being the nationalist community who are going to cause this, it's the fucking, it's the unionist community because they feel cut off. Do you know what I mean? It goes against everything that they they believe in, right? They believe in Northern Ireland being part of the United Kingdom. Sticking a border up in the, in the Irish Sea totally cuts Northern Ireland off from the rest of the EU, from the rest of the UK. And that's not acceptable to them. So I don't know what the solution to this is, but something needs to be done here because this is just not acceptable. And now we've got the Americans piling in on this as well. So we'll have to see what happens. But this is another thing that Brexit is causing here. Massive discontent, massive riots and fucking public disorder and stuff that's going on all because of fucking Brexit. So another thing that's happening is that so the United Kingdom, like, is a country, but it's actually made up of other countries. So it's the United Kingdom is made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, right? These are the constituent parts that make up the country that we call the United Kingdom, right? Now, a few years ago, Scotland... Um, had a referendum about leaving the United Kingdom and and forging its own its own path and becoming an independent country on its own, right? So it was going to leave the United Kingdom and become a, an independent country, and it had a referendum on this, but it didn't. The referendum didn't pass, so Scotland stayed within the United Kingdom, right? But because of all this Brexit stuff, right? Because this is a, because Brexit is having a massive effect on Scotland. Like Scotland is a major um, seafood exporter. Like Scottish salmon is one of our, is a is a massive fucking is a massive export that we that we do, right? But this is all being fucked up because of Brexit. So Scotland's not being able to export its salmon and its mussels and its prawns and all the other stuff that it does. This is a major part of the Scottish economy here, right? That's just been taken a massive fucking battering because of Brexit. Again, the the border um patrols and stuff in Scotland are just not working. There's not pe there's nobody working in the in the borders. So essentially everything's being held up again there. This is having a massive effect on Scotland, right? But what this is doing is this is inflaming the independence movement again in Scotland. So now we've got um Nicola Sturgeon who she she's like 
So like within these separate countries in Scotland and Wales, we've got like devolved government. So they've got like their own little mini government within the United Kingdom, right? But but they've got their, what they call first minister, was like their prime minister or whatever. Uh, she's called Nicola Sturgeon, right? So she's calling for another referendum now, right? And the independence movement is massively expanding there. So all of the polls and stuff that we see show that independence is quite popular again in Scotland and all the polls show that if there was a referendum tomorrow that they'd vote to leave right but there's a massive head of steam here so she's calling for another referendum for independence from Scotland right but also Wales is also being massively affected by Brexit and again, there's now calls in Wales for independence from this. So this, so Brexit looks like it might end up breaking up the United Kingdom, right? So the United Kingdom is formed between the, the Act of Union, right? But it looks like this might be cancelled out. So we've got Scotland and Wales calling for independence here, right? In Northern Ireland, there's calls for a referendum for the unification of Northern Ireland with Southern Ireland. So again, it looks like Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland might actually fucking leave the United Kingdom and that'll just leave England on its own. So Brexit might end up destroying the country. This is this is where we're headed. This is what looks like happening here, right? That the entire country might disappear because of Brexit. I don't know if this is something that the people who vote for Brexit foresaw that this might happen but this is certainly something that remainers said might happen and it looks like it looks like it is going to happen that there's going to be independence referendums in both scotland and wales to leave the country so the brexiteers are now going on about this new thing that's happening that they're saying is a fantastic thing, which just seems a bit idiotic. And that is that imperialist measurements might come back, right? So in 1972, Britain adopted the um, uh, decimalisation, right? So, so before 1973, we had our own methods of measurements. Do you know what I mean? We had... Like, rather than kilos and stuff, we had pounds and ounces and stuff, right? And instead of kilometres, we had miles and stuff. And these are called imperial measurements, right? And in 1973, all of that ended, and we moved over to the decimal system. Um, and that's basically how things have been. So if you go to a shop now, you buy things in kilos and kilograms and stuff like that, and litres rather than pints. Right, But because we've left the EU, they're now saying that we might go back to the imperial measurements, which is just insanity. Imperialist measurements are fucking nonsense, do you know what I mean? Right, It's much easier doing things in decimal, where everything's base 10, do you know what I mean? Rather than imperial measurements, where it's all kind of nonsense, and I don't even know imperialist measurements. I was born in 1971, a year before we changed over. All I've ever known is a decimalisation currency. But now they're talking about bringing back imperial measurements as if this is some kind of fucking victory or some shit. I don't know. Seems like a lot of nonsense to me. But anyhow, right, that's where we are. Brexit is causing all kinds of fucking problems in this country. We've got no food. We've got no meat. We've got no fruit and vegetables. We've got a food crisis in Northern Ireland. We've got a food crisis in the country. <clears throat> We've got a lack of workers. We've got no, We've got food rotting in the fields. We've got food rotting at the borders. This is an absolute fucking disaster. Brexit is nothing but a disaster.